What's up everybody, the Fly Guys here today. Gonna tie a uh, baitfish pattern here that I call Red Eye. Um, I used to tie this, I have a pretty short shank here. This is a three aught. I used to tie it um, in a long shank. You see it's about twice as long, but I had trouble with hookups. Um, on this one I was losing kind of more fish than I thought I should be. So I switched to a short shank and the hookup rate drastically increased. So that's why I went with the short shank 3 aught um, instead of the long shank. Um, to start here, I've put some lead wraps on the hook and I'm just going to work all the way to the back, right to the bend of the hook and I'm going to tie in my tail. And I'm going to just use some red flash here. What I do is take the tips and kind of pull them to make them uneven. Then I'm just going to wrap it around my thread here. Make sure they're about even and I'm going to pull it right on top, right behind the lead wraps. And then I'm just going to tie it in two times, two on top and then one right on the underside. Now you can put, um, I see some guys will put the mono underneath to keep the tail up but I don't, I don't think it's a problem with this one. Um, next step, I just this is some craft fur, just white. You can use bucktail as well, but um, I don't want it to be super buoyant. I kind of want it to get down, so I don't like to use the uh, the bucktail as it's kind of more buoyant. Um, this tail should go about to the pretty close to the end of the flash. It's okay if it's a little bit shorter, but pretty close to that uh, to the end of the flash there. All right, tie that in, trim off your excess. Oop. Trim off your excess. Nice. And before you even move forward to wrap it up, it, it's an instinct to want to wrap up that front little bit, little excess there. Just don't do anything. It's in there tight, you're good. The m less wraps with the same security, the better. So here I've got some barred black and red feathers and I want these to be again about the same length as the craft fur so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on this side and I'm going to line it up and strip some of those fuzzies off at the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it lay it on its side secure it with two sort of loose wraps and then pull it so that part of the feather has come back into the thread. This will stabilize it, so it will keep this sort of side profile. I mean, it will keep it upright. So then I'll just give it a tight cinch. I'll do the same thing on the other side. The same feather. Well, this one's not particularly great. I will uh, line it up. Feather needs to be right about there. And do that same process. This way you can have a nice stable um, tail that isn't going to foul. This tail almost never fouls, which is great. How's that? That looks pretty good. And that's another reason I went to the short shank. It seems to foul a lot less um, than the long shank did. So then you can just trim your stems off. Now you can go in and secure everything. Right? See, there's no, there was no reason to do those extra wraps. And I'm going to go through the lead body and just secure it down a little bit more. Just to make sure that it's in there nice and good. Alright, so there's our tail. Um, nice and, nice and full, nice and fluffy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the body. Um, and on the body here, it's going to be rabbit. So here I have a white rabbit strip. Um, it's important that when you're wrapping your strip, that, did I catch that? Yeah. When you're wrapping your strip, that you're pulling the fibers backwards. If you don't, they'll kind of stay wherever they want to stay. Um, so make sure that you are pulling those fibers backwards. This will allow them to sort of lay down as you wrap forward because we want that body to be working backwards. 
I'm going to speed this up for you guys a little bit. Okay, so there's our body, nice white fluffy body, and see how they're, they're facing backwards? That's that kind of action that we want, is that backwards uh, facing action. So, from here, you're going to take one red marabou feather, this is just one, just strip off some of the bottom fibers, just so that you can get a tie-in point, and there we go. There's my tie-in point, and you're going to wrap it adjacent to your body, your white rabbit strip. Now, I have yet to find a marabou that doesn't bleed into the white, and it's okay, you can see, so here's this one, I use it quite a bit, and you can see these feathers have become pink, that white rabbit has kind of become pink, um, and that's okay, I haven't noticed anything particularly different about it, um, or it doesn't fish any worse, so fish don't seem to be any worse off. So the marabou, um, you're going to begin to wrap it. It can get kind of messy, but just keep working those fibers back as you're wrapping. Um, just keep working them back, keep working them back, keep working them back until you get to a point where you think you're pretty satisfied. And then what I do is just tie it in, tie in that point, and then I just use that extra little bit. And some people cut it off, but I I don't like to lose any uh, lose any bulkiness, so I just kind of toss it back. If you don't like it, like it kind of is sticking up out here, it's kind of not making it look great, then feel free to cut it off. But once it gets wet and everything lays down, it really, it really pops. So, so there we work everything back. There we go. We have now we have a nice sort of red shield around our white body. There we go. Good. Um, so that will lay down pretty much like that in the water. Fantastic. Now, these little extra strips of white rabbit, don't throw them away. You're thinking, what can I use these little white strips for? Well, this little part is exactly what I use them for. Tie in your white rabbit strip, again, right out front. One, this I like the sort of white and red collar. Two, this will help keep your marabou um, in shape, it won't allow that marabou to kind of go all over the place. So, do your wraps. You'll only be able to do a couple. Careful not to catch any marabou. You'll you only be able to do a couple wraps because you're kind of running out of room. But you only need a couple. You only need two or three wraps, really. So there's my third wrap and I'm going to catch it right there, right behind the eye. You can go right up to the eye if you want. Feel free to get up close and personal because, so trim your excess there, because we're going to put a fish skull on. Um, and I like to work back just to make sure that it's caught. Good. So now this little collar here, you see that? It's just fantastic. Just blending, blending, blending. Um, this little collar here is going to help keep that marabou down. It won't let it sort of frail out, especially when you're going and stopping. This marabou will have a tendency to go forward still because nothing's holding it back. With this collar protecting it, it really won't flutter too much forward. So right here, you're good. You can whip finish. If you want, you can add a little piece of flash in here or something. That's totally fine. I don't, but you can. Um... So I do a little whip finish, and then here I have a prime fish skull uh, head there. This um, I've already put the eyes on, but you're going to here we go slide it right on. What I like to do is take some zappa gap. So here's some brush on zap gap, and just brush the inside of the head. Um, I'll brush the inside of the head and just brush the inside of the head with some Zappa Gap. And then I slide it right on. Be careful not to get any on your fingers. Slide it right on. 
Make sure that it is centered and upright exactly how you want it because it sets fairly quickly. So that looks pretty good. I like to look from the front. I think the front gives you a better view of sort of what's going on. And so that will set. Look at that, doesn't that look pretty? Um, so this will set and while it's setting, Zapigap takes only a few seconds to set. The next thing, I just put a small dam. I do like four wraps, pull it tight, trim off your excess here. And then I whip finish. That's all I do. I do a really, really small dam just to make sure that it can't slip forward, just some extra protection. Then I'll just do four or five whip finishes just for extra protection. I'm going to be using this for pike, so I want it to be really solid. And then I'll come in with a little bit of extra zappy gap and just kind of touch around that front. This will really hold that fish head in place and it's not going anywhere. And then there's your fly. Really, really simple. Um, really, really effective. This bait fish looks great in the water. Can get down, and best of all, it's extremely durable. So there's your, there's your uh, red-eyed bait fish. So thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Check us out on Instagram at uh, Main Fly Guys, and we hope to see you guys next time.